Hi everyone, this is module 1 pre class video on representation of power system components. Myself, Dr. MJ Chandrasekhar, Associate Professor, Department of Tripoli, e, SJB Institute of Technology. In this video, I will be explaining steady state model of synchronous machine. The synchronous machine is uh, the most important element uh, in our power system. Here, I will be showing you the figure. This is the schematic cross sectional diagram of the three phase synchronous generator that is alternator having two pole structure. Here you are seeing the stator and here you have a stator uh, slots. In the stator slots there are 6 slots and in this we want 3 coils. They are A, A dash starting and end of the terminal, B, B dash and C, C dash and uh, rotor we have a winding on the rotor. So, that is the DC excitation is given. So, stator, field winding and the rotor. Here the rotor is cylindrical one that is non salient pole rotor with rotor winding excited with the DC source. Here the rotor winding is so arranged on the rotor periphery that the field excitation produces nearly sinusoidal rotating distributed flux per pole that is phi f. In the air gap as the rotor rotates the three phase EMFs are produced in uh, stator windings. Here the machine we have considered is balanced one and uh, balanced loading will be considered here. So, here the modeling of this synchronous machine on steady state, here steady state in the sense the load is constant. So, on per phase basis we do the analysis for the considered phase A. So, if you consider the machine which is having a more than two poles the frequency of the individual voltage is given by n p by 120 hertz. So, here the number of poles are fixed and the frequency of the generated EMFs will be given by the speed at which it rotates. So, here n is the rotor speed and uh, p is the number of poles. So, phasor relationship between these the phi f that is flux per pole to the individual voltage if you consider the drop in the windings constant that is uh, negligible then the individual voltage comes across terminal of the winding. Next uh, we will see the phasor representation of a synchronous generator. So, here what we do? I consider the terminal voltage is constant, and if you consider the line uh, the winding drop that is uh, in phase A, we have a XA reactance and current flows gives a drop. So, the vectorical sum of these uh, two phasors will be the induced voltage. The induced voltage is the vector sum of terminal voltage plus drop. So, the current always lag behind the terminal voltage by an angle of phi that is 
dependent signal. If it is inductive in nature, therefore, uh, it uh, lags with respect to the terminal voltage, but the angular difference between the terminal voltage and the inducer voltage will be the delta. The delta is nothing but the rotor angle or the angle by which E f leads V r is called load angle. This is very important terminology load angle. So, how much load you are putting depending on that the terminal uh, voltage and the excitation voltage angle varies, but theta is the power factor angle that is uh, current versus voltage. Now, let us write the terminal voltage V t is nothing but the excitation voltage minus j into I a into x a, because this E f is more E f is or you can write E f is equal to V t plus j into I a x a. So, inducer voltage is more than the terminal voltage. So, that is given by this equation. So, let us write the equivalent circuit of this. Let us write the equivalent circuit of this in the next uh, slide. So, this is the equivalent circuit of the equation which is shown here. So, that is E f is equal to I a R a plus V t. See the effect of armature uh, resistance and uh, leakage reactance is included uh, to give the complete uh, circuit model of the synchronous generator. So, here the x a x a is the armature reactance and the leakage reactance will be the synchronous reactance. So, let us consider these uh, two reactances that is x a and x l put together is the synchronous reactance synchronous reactance. So, this V t is nothing but E minus of these two drops that is resistance drop and the reactance drop. Next though, if you neglect the resistances and the consideration of some of these uh, x a and x l s x s, we will get this equivalent circuit shown here. This is the equivalent circuit by neglecting the resistances. Always we neglect in the analysis the resistances drop, because this would not change the performance of the system behavior voltage angle at would not change because of the resistance. Resistance will contribute only the heat losses. Therefore, in the analysis we neglect always the resistance uh, in the circuits. So, thereafter we can write the phasor diagram like this that is V t, V t is the terminal voltage, the drop is uh, I into x that is I a into x s, the sum of these two phases will be the, the individual voltage that is E f current lags with respect to terminal voltage by an angle of theta. So, similarly, we can write the this E f is equal to this in the same lines, if it is capacitive or inductive depending on that we can write the phasor diagram. But this is the diagram we are written for motor operation, motor operation see here here you are seeing the current, the current is going towards the terminal that means, this is generator, generator is supplying the power to the load. Similarly, here as you see terminal voltage from that current is coming means, this is the synchronous motor, motor like a motor. So, we are supplying to the motor, so motor rotor is this, so you are supplying means V t is more. V t is more, see here V t phasor is more, V t is equal to this excitation plus this. Next we will see how do you represent the loads. 
So, the load drawn by the consumers is the toughest parameter to access scientifically, because load whether it is resistive load, inductive load or capacitive load it depends and also load the consumer will put on the system based on its requirement on our requirements uh, the one will put. Therefore, it is a toughest parameter to access uh, scientifically and uh, the loads are generally composed of uh, various types domestic, industrial and commercial loads. The design, the design and operation of uh, the design and operation of the power system economically is greatly influenced by the nature and magnitude of loads. So, from the practical observation it is done that the induced uh, the inductive loads are more on the uh, uh, grid that is uh, 55 to 75 percent of the loads are of uh, inductive in nature, synchronous motors are 5 to 15 percent, light and uh, heating loads are 30 percent. Next uh, constant power representation, constant power representation here uh, this is used in load flow analysis uh, here we are uh, with the p and q values are known. So, they are um, real power and the reactive power. So, constant current representation, constant current representation current is nothing but power divided by as you know. So, power I will write and uh, show you. So, the complex power is V i conjugate so, what is I? I conjugate is nothing but S divided by V. S is nothing but uh, the power triangle you can know that S is equal to P plus Q. This is power triangle. I will arise and uh, write neatly. So, power triangle you know this is power triangle. This is S, this is P, this is Q, this is 5. So, S is equal to P plus J Q. So, I conjugate is V. Suppose, if you take conjugate on both uh, LHS and RHS, you will get minus J Q divided by V conjugate. So, this is the formula it is written here. So, this I is a complex quantity, it has magnitude as well as the angle. So, here voltage is this, this is the power factor angle. So, next uh, we will see the second. Uh, constant third one, first one is uh, constant power representation of load and the second one is constant current representation, third one is constant impedance representation. So, here uh, it is quite often to uh, use in stability studies this constant uh, impedance representation. Uh, the load uh, specified in uh, megawatts and MAR that is the real and reactive powers at nominal voltage. Uh, is used to compute the load impedance. So, that is S is Z is equal to V divided by R this we know, Z is equal to V by I we know. So, here V divided by I, I we know that in the previous derivation I is equal to uh, I is equal to Z is equal to P divided by sorry. Uh, Z is equal to Z is equal to V divided by I, but uh, I value is uh, P minus J Q divided by V conjugate. Take it to the numerator. V into V conjugate is V square divided by P minus J Q. Z is nothing but one by Y. So this is the formula we can uh, write for uh, constant impedance representation. Here, V is a V magnitude of V at an angle of delta that is complex value. Here, theta is 10 inverse of Q by P is the power factor angle. So, this is uh, the constant current uh, representation because the magnitude of current is uh, regarded as constant in this study. With this, I will end this video.